Okay, so we just got to the point of um, defining what sine and cosine and tangent are in the last video. Uh, and that sine is the opposite of the hypotenuse, that cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent from last time was opposite over adjacent. And then in the um, notes I describe how you're supposed to look to this video to find how to do two of the types of problems you might see um, in this section. One is, okay, if you had at least two sides of a right triangle, um, could you find all the ratios? And let's start with one that kind of looks like the triangle we've been doing um, the whole time. This will, We'll call this B again. I think C was the right angle. doesn't really matter. Let's say we're talking about B, though. The B is the angle in question. And the question is, by the end, I want to be able to find the sine of B as a fraction. I want the fraction for sine of B. I want the fraction for cosine of B. And I want the fraction for tangent of B. This is what we're looking for. And all these are going to be fractions. Remember, there are fractions in the last page. Uh, for sine of sine of B, I'm going to be looking for the opposite over the hypotenuse. For cosine, I'm going to be looking for adjacent over hypotenuse. And for tangent, I need opposite over adjacent. Okay, that's what I'll be looking for. And I said, what else would we be given here? It was, if we are given two sides of the triangle, we could actually find all of that stuff. And I'll make this a little bit interesting. I'll just give you this side. Let's say the hypotenuse is 20. And let's say that this side over here, if that's 20, this looks like it might be a little bigger than half. We'll say that this side might be 13, just to make it ugly. Okay. So um, there's two sides. Well, all of these things are going to require that I know two different sides. There is actually one of them that has these two sides in it. I get lucky kind of on one of them. And then for the other two, I'm going to need this side that I'm missing. We'll talk about how to do that later. Um, I'm going to switch to red now because this is the... All this stuff is the given stuff, and from now on it's the answer. Okay, so um, relative to side B over here, I know that no matter what, this is the hypotenuse. This is the hypotenuse of the triangle. So that's that's the side that's going to go down here because that's opposite over hypotenuse. And B is adjacent over hypotenuse. I could actually fill that out right now too. Didn't give myself a lot of room here. Relative to B though, this 13, this is the side that's opposite. This, then, the missing side would be the side that's adjacent, and I don't know that yet. I'm going to need that for, for cosine and for, for tangent, but I, um, I'm going to need this opposite for sine. That goes here. Oh, and while I'm at it, opposite also goes here in the tangent ratio, if you remember that. Okay, so I need to find out this adjacent ratio to figure out these other two things. And don't forget, this is just a little advertisement here. This is a right triangle. Don't forget, you can do this. I'll call this little A. And I know that the Pythagorean theorem holds because this is a right triangle. A squared plus 13 squared equals 20 squared. We've been doing this a lot this chapter. 13 squared. You know, I just don't want to make a mistake in front of everybody. So 13 squared is actually uh, 169. I was going to say that, but I was, you know, didn't want to make any mistakes. All right, and this is 400. So I'm actually going to want to subtract to figure out what a squared is. a squared is 400 minus 169. And that's 231. We 231. And so a is the square root of 231. And you know what? Since we're here, i got plenty of time left in this video to talk about this. Let's see if 231 reduces. Um, does any does 231 have any square factors? Uh, let's try to divide it by 9. It looks like 3 goes in there, but 9 doesn't go in. No, 9 doesn't go in there. Uh, 25 and 2 thirds. 9 doesn't go in. 16 doesn't go in. Um, I'm looking for square factors. 4, no. 9, no. 16, no. 25, no. 36, no. 49, I doubt it. If I can hit this 1 to press, there we go. Uh, 49, I'm sure it doesn't actually, but I'm just going to prove it to myself here. Okay, yeah, and I'm well past anything I should even try checking, so we're done. Square root of 231. Uh, so that works. So the square root of 231 is this adjacent side here. This is the square root of 231. See, I told you it was going to be ugly. Great. If I wanted this as an exact value, this is the best I can do. I can just say this is the square root of 231. And, of course, the tangent also is opposite over adjacent, so this is also adjacent here. Square root of 231. Um, square root of 231 divided by 20, that's perfectly nice. This one's sort of misspelled here because it has a um, 
square root in the denominator. So I multiply both sides by, or sorry, the top and bottom by the square root of 231. We've done this enough now. I think I could just jump to showing you that that's going to be equivalent to 13 times the square root of 231 over 231. Now, can I reduce that? Maybe I can reduce that. 13 over 231. This is how I reduce fractions on this calculator. Does that decimal convert to a fraction? It does not. Any better than 13 over 231, so I will stop there. That's the values of sine and cosine and tangent of this angle, knowing just the 20 and the 13. I just thought of something to illustrate another point here. What if, what if they had asked us about angle A? in this triangle. It's a perfectly nice triangle. Now in angle A, for, for angle A, the sine of A, it says, I don't feel like I've talked about this enough, the sine of A is the side opposite of A divided by the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse is 20. But the side opposite of A now is actually the square root of 231. I'm not going to write opposite on that picture because I think it will confuse people looking at this, this original problem about the red one. But uh, in this purple color here, the sine uh, the sign of A is op the angle opposite A to the um, hypotenuse ratio. So I have to talk about this one opposite of A. The cosine then of A is the side adjacent to A. Now this 13 is adjacent to A. It was opposite of B, but it's adjacent to A. A is adjacent of the hypotenuse. And the tangent of A is uh, its opposite over its adjacent, which would be the square root of 231 over 13. The interesting here is I don't have to reduce any of these square roots. It's just the luck of the draw there. Um, anyway, so the sine and the cosine, if you look at this, I talk about this at the end of the notes. Notice that the sine of this angle is the same as the cosine of this angle. And the cosine of this angle is the same as the sine of this angle. If you think about how opposite and adjacent switch places, this 13 and this two, square root 231 are just going to trade places, which is what happened here. Uh, tangents of the two angles have a little bit different relationship. It's not completely hard to see. And again, it's because the um, opposite and adjacent trade places when you're talking about angle A versus angle B. The other interesting thing we know has to happen here, if this is a right triangle, we know something about this. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here. Not really maybe supposed to learn this uh, this year, but it's so cool. And we're right here, and I have a few more minutes in this video. Uh, measure of angle A plus measure of angle B has to be known because this is a right triangle. That's always 90. So um, we would call these complementary angles. And part of the reason why we call this the cosine is because it's like the sine of the complement angle. If we know the sine of B is 13 over 20, the sine of the other angle has to be um, the other side over the hypotenuse. It has to be um, basically this, this angle's adjacent over hypotenuse. That will be the sine of the complement of the angle. Cosine B is the same as sine A. That's where that comes from. Uh, again, this, all this pink stuff is a little bit uh, bonus material. You don't really need to know that stuff um, right away, but it is going to come back. And trigonometry, you'll see, kind of goes on and on and on. And there's all these cool internal relationships. All right, the next um, type of problem I said you were going to have on there was uh, given a side and one acute angle of a right triangle, could you find the other side length? All right, um, should I make it a little bit different looking? Okay, we'll make it something like this this time. So it doesn't, don't, all my triangles don't look exactly the same. I'm not color. Let me change to black for the given information. And I said here, given a side and one acute angle. So if all we knew was... Um, I think we knew this side. That was kind of a missing one last time. I'll flip it around. Say we knew that that was 10, and we knew that this angle here was, I'll call this C and A again. Uh, let's say we knew the angle there was 63 degrees. And the question is, find another side length. Well, just to be fancy, I'm, I'm going to say we could actually find B here, uh, or we could actually find C. Um, it doesn't really matter which one we find first. Really, once we knew one of them, we could find the... Um, we could find the other one with Pythagorean theorem. Once you know two sides, the third one is easy by Pythagorean theorem. Uh, we're going we're gonna to use trig to find C first. And then without using C, we'll use trig to find B. How about that? So find C is the first thing we're trying to do. You know what I just thought of? I didn't actually write on the last page. And I want to have this for uh, posterity here. The, the thing I was supposed to find was this. I never wrote down what the find was here. I just got so excited about doing the problem. I never really said 
what we were after here. What we were after here was sine, cosine, tangent. So let me write that on here so I don't forget. So when I print this and post it, it's got all this stuff on here. I'm looking for the sine and the cosine and the tangent of b. Okay, but here I'm not looking for sines and cosines and tangents in this page. I'm actually looking for the length of c. Okay. Um, oh, I just thought a third type of problem I got to put on there too. Okay, great. Find c. Um, c, if we're talking about the 63 and the 10, all I have to go on go by right now is this 63 degree angle, the fact that this is a right triangle, and this side length of 10. Relative to the angle I know, I should call this 10 the adjacent side. B will then be the opposite side, opposite leg, and C will be the hypotenuse. There's sort of no getting around that. In reference to the 63, that's what becomes opposite. Touching it is the adjacent, and hypotenuse is hypotenuse. So uh, if I'm looking for C, uh, the, three th the three ingredients in this problem right now is, well, I've got to find C. I know a 63 degree angle, and I know that there's a side length of 10. Those three things are going to have to make up uh, three of the ingredients in in this business. Um, you know, there's always three things here. There's an angle, whether I'm talking about sine or cosine or tangent of that angle. There's an angle, and there's two sides involved. And that's exactly what I've got going on here. I've got a I've got one side that I know, which is 10. I've got another side which I care about, which is C, and I have this angle. So those are the three things in a so a co sorry, a so, a ka, or a toa. So what am I talking about here? A sine, a cosine, or a tangent? Well, relative to 63, C is the hypotenuse, no matter what. So there's a couple of those ratios that have hypotenuse on the bottom. Uh, and of course, I know I'm talking about 63 degrees. What I don't know yet is what relation to put here. Is it sine, cosine, or tangent? Equals what over hypotenuse? Well, the 10, the other one I care about, the other one of these ingredients here, is the adjacent. So what I really have here in Sokotoa language, I have adjacent over hypotenuse. And if I look back at the Sokotoa, or if I can just remember, Sokotoa, the one with A and H was cosine. This is from Ka. So it's the fact that I have adjacent and hypotenuse that indicates that what I really need to be thinking about here is cosine. And that gets some people frustrated, at least at first, that it's the two sides I'm dealing with that determine which I want, sine, cosine, or tangent. It's because it's adjacent and hypotenuse. The one with adjacent and hypotenuse is cosine. If I was dealing with the two sides that were not the hypotenuse, if I was dealing with the opposite and adjacent, that would force me to be talking about a tangent. Or if I was talking about the opposite and the hypotenuse, that would force me to be thinking about sine. So I think I think the problem with that comes from the fact that when people see these, they're they, they get these fractions because they're being told what sine is, what cosine is, and what tangent is. And this is kind of the converse of that problem. You, you know you're dealing with these first, and you have to look back at this picture and go, oh, yeah, that's the one that's cosine. So that's why we have to pick cosine here, because we have adjacent and hypotenuse. And, okay, I think I've said that enough now. Oh, man, we're running out of time again. All right, so the cosine of 63, I know everything else about this equation except for this C now. Uh, cosine of 63 equals 10 over C. I'll multiply both sides by C, divide both sides by cosine 63, I get the fact now that, the, that C equals 10 over the cosine of 63, and all that stuff I can do right on my calculator. Let me do that. 10 divided by the cosine of 63. And that tells me that side length is about really close to 22. I really just want to say 22. Okay, so that tells me that this is just about 22. All right, I said I would do uh, another one, too. We're going to also talk about um, B. I could find B because B is opposite and 10 is adjacent. Opposite over adjacent is one of those things. Opposite over adjacent is tangent. So tangent of 63. 63 is the angle here. That tells me B is the opposite to 63, and 10 is adjacent to 63. That fills that out this way. Multiply both sides by 10 and I'll figure out B. Then one thing I'm afraid I'm going to have time to talk about but isn't much different than the last section is what if you knew two of these sides and needed an angle? Whoops. I want 10, 10, 63. All you would do is the same thing. You just have to um, find the inverse at the end, which we did a lot of. Okay, and this answer is, this last missing side, is really close to 19.6. Okay, thanks for watching. Um, be nice to the sub. I'll see you next week.